I'd now like to move on and very quickly give a, uh, a demonstration of the software solving these problems uh, in real time. They do say never worked with uh, children or animals, to which you should probably add live software, but we'll, we'll give it a go and hopefully it will work well. So I'm just logging in here into our Alphamite Analytics web platform and finding uh, a model that I trained earlier. So this particular model is based on some steals data. It's uh, got a set of rows where each row is an uh, existing material that it had some measurements taken on it. And each column is a property of this material. So the first view here are the uh, material composition. We've got a processing parameter, which is the heat treatment. And then we've got some well, for here three uh, physical properties that were measured of this uh, material, of each material. So as soon as we um, created this data set, as soon as we uploaded it onto our Alchemy Analytics platform, um, it automatically trained a machine learning model in the background to capture all of the relationships in this data set, specifically tuned to this data set always bespoke to your problem. And the first thing we can do is, as we showed with the pet shop example, we can show the predictions on this data set, fill in the gaps, any sparsities that were there in the predicted values. As we have with the pet shop example, each value uh, comes with corresponding uncertainty, uh, quantified uncertainty, so that we can decide how much we want to trust each one. So that's for trusting the predictions. I'd also like to talk today about how do we trust the model? How do we trust that the model is correct? One way that we can do that is using the tools on our analytics tab here on the left screen. So when I click on this, the first graph that pops up here is a measure of the accuracy of the model calculated using that model training uh, procedure. We've got the three output properties, and we see how well it did against each one. Two of the bars are better, uh, bars down the bottom would be not so good. Here we've got three um, output properties, all of which are predicted fairly well, uh, but maybe UTS and yield strength a bit more accurately than in navigation here. One of the other tools that we've got to help understand how the model's working, and so build trust that it's working correctly, uh, it's what we call the importance matrix. So here we've got our three outputs again of the three rows. And then each of the other columns, uh, each of the columns in the data set uh, are the columns on this table. And then the colors in this importance table show the importance uh, of the relationship for each of these uh, input variables, for each of these output predictions. Uh, so the yellows and greens are more important, and the purple is not important, really, uh, in this particular example. So, for example, we could read off some greens here, titanium, apparently uh, the amount of titanium is a good predictor, or helps the model predict the yield strength of the elongation quite well. Uh, if you've got a, a material science background, hopefully you'll recognize that. Similarly, the UTS and the yield strength are good predictors of each other. They're strongly correlated outputs. Again, if you've got a material science background, you'll know that that's probably uh, correct. So by picking out these relationships that are true, we can build confidence that the model uh, knows what it's talking about. And we can then look at maybe the more subtle relationships that are in the data. The ones that aren't immediately jumping out because they're not immediately um, known to the expert user. And we can use those to pick out relationships that would be worth us exploring uh, in the future. So that's um, the model, how we can build trust in it. I'd also like to quickly talk about um, the exploration of this high dimensional landscape. So if I go to our optimized tab, this is where we set up uh, designs for new materials 
to try and come up with a new material that's going to achieve your goals. We do this exploration of the or navigation through this uh, landscape to come up with the best new materials. So here, the composition, the heat treatment, those are the defining this high dimensional space that we're going to navigate. And we can prioritize these, uh, this exploration by the targets that we want to achieve in our search. So for example, we want to achieve a high yield strength, say above 1800 megapascals, and a low elongation for this material, below 10%. We can then prioritize these. We can say, uh, I'm mostly interested in getting the yield strength correct. Let's, uh, let's weight that up. Let's downweight the elongation. That's a nice to have, but uh, it's not critical for this particular application. We can also set up the input space if we want to constrain it more than the default that Alchemite gives us here. We can do that. We could say, let's not explore over that range of cobalt. Let's reduce it. Uh, if we wanted to take out some of these variables, reduce the dimensionality that we're exploring, that's possible as well. And then once we've set up the targets, the, uh, the objectives for the navigation, we've set up the landscape that we're going to explore over, click optimize up here at the top, Alphamite goes away, thinks about it for a second, and comes back with a material that it thinks is going to be likely to achieve our goals. We've got the formulation here, so 0.14 uh, fraction copper, 1.6% manganese, etc. We've got the predicted properties, yield strength, 1,900 megapascals it thinks we might be able to get. Each of those predictions, as always, comes with a quantified uncertainty. And then once we've got this uh, point in our uh, landscape that we're exploring, we can analyze it in a bit more detail. So this graph uh, is the one that we looked at earlier. It's the uh, plot of showing how each of the outputs varies with each of the inputs. So if I pick an interesting one, say titanium, the way that yield strength varies with titanium uh, shown on the screen here. So we can see the reason that the algorithm picked a high level of titanium shown by the red point here being towards the right of the screen is that if we'd reduce that down to sort of below 1% titanium, it's a predicted drop off in the yield strength for this material. Similarly, we could look at the elongation. Uh, here it's the other way around, that uh, elongation uh, is negatively correlated with titanium content. And we can see that again, if we'd reduce the titanium content, we've increased the elongation and given us a worse result, worse outcome. So that enables us to build trust, build understanding of what the model is proposing. And then we can take this suggestion and we could adjust it a little bit if we liked, but then we could go and manufacture it, test it in the real world, feed the data back into the system and come up with uh, better predictions in the future. 